this video we're going to go through some definitions and an example and this is the typical textbook kind of example except we're going to carry it a little further than most textbooks would uh, suppose farmer brown quits his job working for farmer blue where he was making forty thousand dollars per year he takes a hundred thousand dollars out of the bank and he was making five percent interest on that money before he withdrew it and he buys ten acres of land suppose he grows strawberries and sells them for ninety thousand dollars he also pays $1,000 for seeds, $5,000 for fertilizer, and $10,000 for a worker to help him pick the strawberries. And additionally, Farmer Brown desires a minimum of $5,000 in compensation for his efforts as an entrepreneur owning this business. Now that's over and above any other labor effort that he puts in, just $5,000 for the fact that he's in there taking a risk, working as his own boss. It's, it's annoying. It, it's harder than working for someone else. He also bought a tractor for $10,000, which the IRS says over the last year depreciated by $2,000, but the tractor is still worth $9,000 on the resale market. And the typical problem will now ask you to identify which of these costs are implicit, which are explicit, and then they'll ask you to calculate the accounting profit and the economic profit. So let's do that. An explicit cost is anything where you can imagine that Farmer Brown actually has to take money out of his pocket and hand it to another person. So an explicit cost, just like an explicit film, it's right there in your face and you can see it. You can see the money changing hands. So explicit means you can see the money move from one place to another. So an explicit cost, let's look at these different costs here and identify which involve Farmer Brown taking money and handing it to someone else. This $40,000 that he was making before he quit, is Farmer Brown this year going to be taking the $40,000 out of his pocket and handing it to someone else? Answer, no. That's $40,000 he won't make now, it won't be coming to him, but it's not money that's coming out of his pocket and you can see the money moving from his pocket to someone else's pocket. It's not an explicit cost. The $40,000 that he's not making anymore, you can think about it as an opportunity cost, that's an implicit cost. So $40,000 that he's not making now that he used to is an implicit cost. He takes $100,000 out of the bank. That's not really a cost because he's buying land with it. I guess we'd have to assume he could sell the land and get that money back. Now, in the real world, there might be some other costs involved with doing that, but that $100,000 isn't really a cost. But what is a cost is the 5% money that he's not going to be getting anymore. Now, this sounds just like the $40,000 he's not going to be making at the job anymore. And so the 5% this year that he could have made on the $100,000, that's $5,000, that's another implicit cost, so $5,000. He grows strawberries and he sells them for 90000 Well, that's not a cost. That's actually his revenue. So we can put that over here as uh, his uh, revenue, total revenue equals $90,000. So maybe these were $9 per pound for strawberries and he sold 10,000 pounds of strawberries. So that's his revenue. That's not a cost at all. He also pays $1,000 for seeds, 5000 for fertilizer, and 10000 for labor. So when he goes and buys these seeds, is that an explicit cost or an implicit cost? Well, I assume that he actually has to pay for them, take money out of his pocket, or a credit card, or a check. doesn't matter if it's cash, as long as it's money that moves from him to someone else. You can see the money moving, and so that's an explicit cost. When he buys the fertilizer, same thing, that's an explicit cost. And the $10,000 he pays his workers, that $10,000 is also an explicit cost because money in some form, cash, check, credit card, has to move from Farmer Brown to someone else. So those are all explicit costs. So let's just lump them together there and call that uh, $16,000 in explicit costs. Also, Farmer Brown desires a minimum of $5,000 in compensation for his efforts as an entrepreneur. This is the amount of money that Farmer Brown wants to pay himself Otherwise, it's just not worth it to him to stay in business. Now, is that an implicit cost or an explicit cost? Well, that's an implicit cost. 
because it's not money that's moving from Farmer Brown to someone else, but it's just something in Farmer Brown's mind that he's thinking about that he has to have, otherwise he's going to get out of this business in the long run. So that 5000 is what we call normal profit or the return to the entrepreneur, the return to entrepreneurship. It's the amount that he's going to want, otherwise he's going to get out of this business. So that 5000 that's an implicit cost. Another cost here, he bought a tractor for 10000 Just like the land, that's not, that whole thing's not a cost. Just how much it's depreciating. But there's two different ways to view depreciation. One way to view depreciation is what the IRS says, accounting depreciation. And they say that's uh, $2,000. Now, is that $2,000 an implicit or an explicit cost? Is the money going from him to someone else? Answer, no. He already bought the tractor for 10000 That was an explicit transfer of money, but not really a cost because it's an asset now. But the 2000 depreciation, I guess most people would say that's an implicit cost. So let's put that in here, uh, 2000 but there are two ways to measure depreciation. Accountants do it according to a rule book, GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles in the United States. Uh, but economists look at depreciation a different way. We want to know not how much does a book say depreciation is. Uh, depreciation is really supposed to reflect how much the value of the asset has gone down. An economist would say, well, you bought the tractor for 10000 how much could you sell it for now? 9000 Okay, the real depreciation is 1000 And so we have two different versions of this implicit cost. And again, they're implicit because as the value of the tractor goes down, the person is not visibly seen handing money over to someone. So that's why it's an implicit cost. But there are two different ways we could view that cost according to a rule book, 2000 the accountant's version or a thousand for the economist version of depreciation. Now that we've gone through all these numbers, what you would normally be asked to do is calculate what would an accountant say the profit would be and what would an economist say the profit would be. Well, what an accountant is going to do is take the total revenue of 90,000 and then start subtracting off explicit costs accountants don't count implicit costs for the most part except for depreciation. An accountant measures the money as it flows away from a business as costs for the most part. So they're going to take the 90000 and then they're going to subtract off the 16000 in explicit costs and then subtract off the $2,000 in accountant's depreciation and the accountant's version of the profit would be 90000 minus 18000 is $72,000. An economist, on the other hand, is going to say, wait a minute, you forgot some costs and you got the depreciation wrong. So you could think about us starting with that $72,000 figure, and the first thing we would do is add back $1,000 in that depreciation to correct for that and get $73,000, right? Then after we say we fixed that problem with depreciation, we would say there are some other costs of Farmer Brown getting into this business. One cost is that uh, he's losing $40,000 that he could have made somewhere else. So we subtract off the $40,000. And then we say he's also losing $5,000 that he could have earned in interest if he was not, if he didn't have his money in this business. And then also, Farmer Brown told us that just to make it worth it to him to be involved in this business, the extra stress of being an entrepreneur, the extra worry, he wants to make it a minimum another $5,000 to return to him being an entrepreneur. So we're going to subtract off these things. So the economist's version of profit would be $23,000. So so twenty-three thousand dollars is what we would call his economic profit. Now is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well it would be a good thing because we have accounted for all the costs that Farmer Brown had for getting in this business and what this twenty-three thousand means is he did better than he could doing the other thing he could have done. 
this $20,000, $23,000 in economic profit means that Farmer Brown, by becoming an entrepreneur, is making $23,000 more dollars than he could make if he were still doing what he was doing before. So this $23,000 is a good thing, and it just says that you're doing $23,000 more than, better than, you could do in some other comparative option that you have. And to just compare, it's a little more difficult than that because remember we added in this thousand dollars difference in depreciation. Um, but but really when you get down to it, Farmer Brown had seventy three thousand dollars that he made by farming strawberries for himself. But when we compare that to what would he have made uh, in the other option, well, he would have made $40,000 in salary. He would have made $5,000 in interest in the bank. And this other $5,000, remember, is the compensation he demands for the pain and trouble. Think about it as gray hair, worry, stress of being an entrepreneur. So he would have had $50,000 that he earned anyway doing the other thing. And 5,000 of that is an intangible in less stress, but that's fine. We compare the 50,000 he would have made to the 73,000 that he did make, and that tells us that he did $23,000 better. And that's all an economic profit means. If it's positive, it means that you did better than you could in that other option after all the other costs are taken into account. If it's negative, it means that you did worse than you could have in that other option. And if it's zero, that's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It just means that compared to the other option, you're doing exactly the same. You're doing just as well now as you would in the other option. Now let me go through one other part of this story, and this is a particular example that blew my mind when I first heard it years ago. So right now, Farmer Brown is making $23,000 in economic profit. Suppose that absolutely nothing changes, but we're 10 years in the future. Nothing changes except this land that Farmer Brown bought for $100,000, remember he took the $100,000 out of the bank and he bought 10 acres of land with it. Suppose absolutely nothing has changed except now a real estate agent comes and says, hey Farmer Brown, you got 10 acres of land here. You know, this, this city around you is growing and that land, how much did you pay for it? I paid $100,000. Um, he says, you know, I bet that you could sell that land now for one million dollars. And Farmer Brown says, really? Sell it for a million? Well, you know, uh, this economist guy who just came by, he said that I should keep farming because he said I'm making $23,000 in economic profit and that means I'm making more doing what I'm doing than if I was doing something else. So I need to keep farming. So sorry, real estate agent, you should go away. Well, that's not true. This is a game changer right now. Remember how that $100,000 in land came into the equation. It came in right here. This $5,000 in lost interest that Farmer Brown could have made. But now that has changed. If we've got to really look at what could he do now instead of being a farmer. Well, if he sells the land for a million and puts it in the bank at 5%, how much money would he make in interest? Well, if we multiply that times um, 5%, 0.05, now he could make $50,000 in interest. And so if we put this 50000 in here, instead of $5,000, what is his economic profit going to be now? 
Well, we take the 5,000 out of the equation. We start with 73,000 after correcting for that depreciation. 73 minus 40,000 is 33,000. Then we subtract off the $5,000. He needs to be compensated for being an entrepreneur. And then we subtract off $50,000 that he could be making in the bank if he sold his land and got $50,000 a year in interest. And now we're going to calculate that his economic profit is equal to negative $22,000. What does that mean? Well, that tells him that look at this money you could be making if you did the other thing. You could go back to working for Farmer Blue and you can earn $40,000 there. You could go and put that money in the bank if you sell your farm and earn $50,000 a year on interest on the money in the bank. And you could, you know, we subtracted off that $5,000 that, that you wouldn't have to earn to compensate you for the stress of being an entrepreneur. What's the best choice? Well, this negative 22,000 tells Farmer Brown that now, if he got out of farming and did the other thing, he could be making $90,000 in income, plus avoiding $5,000 of gray hair, worry, stress. And you compare that $90,000 plus the 5,000 for not having to worry to the 73,000 that you're actually making now, and you could be $22,000 a year better off if you got out of farming. And so I told you, the first time I heard this, I was floored. I didn't really understand. And maybe you still don't quite get it. How is it that I could be so much worse off when the value of my land goes up? Well, it's not that you're worse off. The fact that the, your land is more valuable now, that is a good thing. It is a good thing. But economic profit, microeconomics is all about helping people make the right decisions. And the economic profit, the only thing it's used for is to tell us if it's positive, I'm doing better than I could do doing something else. If it's zero, I'm doing the same I could do in another opportunity. And if it's negative, it tells you you should do the other thing. The other thing is now better. And the reason it's better is the value of your land is so much higher now. As soon as that money you could make from the land, investing it in some other way, gets to be better. You know, so much higher that you're making more by selling the land than by keeping the land. That's the point where the economic profit will become negative and it'll tell you to do that other thing. This is precisely what we see in a lot of areas. As a city grows and expands and gets nearer and nearer to farmland, the value of that farmland gets higher and higher to where it just makes more sense at some point to sell the land to a developer, take the money, invest it, and get a job somewhere else. There are some other intangible things. Maybe you, you really like farming. Maybe you don't want to let this farmland be turned into just another housing development. And if that's true for you as a farmer, then you would want to build in those factors into your costs. How much you value things should be put into this and it should affect your decision. In the next lecture, we're going to go back and look at calculating things in tables. But the thing you need to take from this discussion, you really need to understand what economic profit means. Because every time we calculate profit from now on in an economics class, we're going to be talking about economic profit. And so if you're making zero profit, remember that's not bad. It means you're making a profit, but you're making the same amount of money you would be making doing something else.